Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another Victober video. Today I'm going to be talking about my long-term Victorian literature TBR. So obviously I'm currently doing Victober and have plenty of books on my Victober TBR but I thought what I would do today is talk about some other Victorian novels that I'm really keen to read at some point in the future, not in Victober, not in the next few months, possibly not even in the next year, but at some point in the future I would like to get to all the novels I'm going to talk about today. So there are a lot of books on this list. <laughs> I have 30 bullet points in my plan and two of them cover all the works by one particular author. So technically I have 60 books on my long-term Victorian literature TBR, so we're going to see how quickly I can go through so many of these titles. The majority of them I know very little about, so that will probably help. Also, this list is mostly novels, and I think they're like a couple of plays, so anyone who has any Victorian non-fiction or poetry or plays to recommend me, that would be really helpful as well. And of course any Victorian novels you'd like to recommend me as well, because I could do with adding even more things to this mid to long term Victorian literature TBR. I'm quite excited to get to all of these books at some point. I've now got to the stage where I've like read a lot of the like important or great Victorian novels and I'm kind of getting into reading more obscure things or like picking up lesser well-known works by well-known authors which I'm really enjoying. You know I've read all of Dickens and all of Hardy and all of the Brontes and enough of George Eliot that I don't need to read anymore. <laughs> but there's so much more Victorian literature to discover. Every now and then people ask me on this channel like are you running out of Victorian books to read? And like no, no do you know how many books those people wrote? Anthony Trollope wrote 47 so you know I'm gonna be busy for a while. Anyway, anyway on to the books. I will start off by talking about the two authors that I want to read in full and these are like there are plenty of authors on this list that I would also theoretically like to read in full at some point but these are the two authors who are like my main priority to read in full at some point soon. One is George Gissing. I've read three out of his 23 novels so I have a long way to go but I've loved the three novels by him that I've read a lot and I really really enjoy what he does and I definitely like to read more by him. I loved The Old Women a lot and New Grove Street and The Netherworld like he's such an interesting clever writer, bit miserable but in such a powerful way and I'm just desperate to read more by him. I don't know where I'm gonna go next unless I get to The Whirlpool this month but probably The Whirlpool I suppose next because I definitely have that on my Kindle and beyond that just everything he's ever written that would be fine by me. Then the other author I would like to read everything by at some point in the not too distant future is Anthony Trollope, possibly before I read everything by George Gissing. Although I have only read 10 out of Anthony Trollope's 47 novels, I have loved those 10 novels so so much that I just desperately desperately want to read more by Anthony Trollope. So I think what I might do, I have a theory, a project in mind that next year 2019 I'm gonna try and read an Anthony Trollope novel every month and I'm gonna call it like the Trollope project. I'll make a video about this at some point in the next month or two before um, 2019 begins but that's my current plan so if you have any recommendations of Anthony Trollope novels that are slightly lesser well known that you would like to recommend me because he wrote so much it's quite hard to know where to go next. I've read The Barsich Chronicles, I've read um, Can You Forgive Her and I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the Palitzer series and I've also read Rachel Ray, The Way We Live Now and He Knew He Was Right but he wrote so many books and I'm just so excited to get to them all because I love his writing style. So now I've got those two big authors out of the way I'm going to go through the individual works on my mid to long term Victorian TBR and I will go through alphabetical order by author because that seems to be a logical way to do it and I don't know what like the priorities are here. One Victorian novel I would really like to read is Flatland, A Romance of Many Dimensions by Edwin Abbott. This is a novel from 1884 which is about maths and Victorian gender, so I believe. It's set in a mathematical world which is 2D. I've been aware of this book for a really really long time. I used to really like maths when I was at school and I remember being like I think feel like someone, maybe one of my teachers, recommended this to me and I've just never got around to reading it. And recently Livy Stevenson recommended it to me as well. In fact, on a video I did last October on my channel, which was like a collab between lots of different booktubers, um, and the book she recommended in that video was Flatland, and that just kind of piqued my interest. I don't think it's very long either, so that's something I really need to try and get to at some point soon. I maybe pick up a physical copy of that because I believe there are illustrations of how the two-dimensional shapes that the book is about go about their lives. I believe that like men are square and women are lines but I can't remember. It sounds interesting anyway. Next is Clara Vaughan by R.D. Blackmore. This is a novel from 1864 and it was on my TBR for Victober last year but I didn't get to it and I didn't put it on my TBR for Victober this year because it's really really long but I definitely want to read it. I don't know much about it except that it's about a female detective. I believe it might be about a girl trying to solve her father's murder but I read Lorna Doon, one of his other books, his most famous book, as a teenager and I just absolutely loved it and I can't believe I haven't read anything else by him since. So Clara Vaughan, that is on my list. Next, What Will He Do With It by 
by Edward Bulwer Lytton. This is from 1858 and I have this one on my Kindle. I have no idea why. I think I downloaded it at a time when I had this idea that I was gonna like look on Victorian web where it lists like the best selling novels from each year in the Victorian period and like read them all. Um, and that was how I think I stumbled across The Egoist by George Meredith but I think that was like the only one of the best sellers year by year of the Victorian period that I read. However, what will he do with it is on my Kindle. I have no idea what it is about but I would like to read something by Edward Bulwer Lytton because he is quite a well-known name. I believe he is the writer that came up with the now considered very cliche phrase, it was a dark and stormy night. Um, and I know he was incredibly best-selling in the Victorian period, but has been a little bit forgotten since, or at least most of his novels no one's really heard of, so he would be an interesting person to read. Then we have Aurora Floyd by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. This is a novel from 1863. Now I read Lady Audley's Secret, a year or two ago and I really really enjoyed it. I found it really really interesting and I definitely want to read something else by her but I'm not really sure what and I was going to go with I think it's called The Serpent's Tale but I think Kate Howe is currently reading that at the moment and not that keen on it so I feel like I'm going to go a slightly different direction. I believe Aurora Floyd is a novel that was published a year after Lady Audley's Secret and was also quite popular. Apparently it deals with bigamy and murder and scandal so that sounds fairly interesting. Next is uh whom by Samuel Butler. I feel like that's not how you say that word. This is a novel from 1872 that is supposed to be a kind of dystopian novel slash satire on Victorian society. I've been meaning to read this for ages, ever since I worked on this book, which is a non-fiction book that I worked on in my first job in publishing at Elwyn Street Productions. And this book, Literary Wonderlands, is like a survey of a hundred or more or less really interesting like fantasy or science fiction worlds created in literature. And there is a chapter on Samuel Butler's air horn or however on earth. That's not, that's not how I say it. I don't know how I say it. It's, it's nowhere backwards with some letters changed. Maybe it's an N, not an M. I think I've written it wrong in my plan. You don't need to know all of this. It is an N. Anyway, I remember editing this chapter and being like, this sounds fascinating and putting it on my reading list. And this was two and a half years ago and I still haven't read it, so it's about time. Next I have The Mystery of Clumber by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is a mystery novel by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle from 1888 and it is a mystery novel that is not about Sherlock Holmes, which I think I would really like to read. I've really enjoyed the Sherlock Holmes series and I also liked Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World, which is from a little bit later, I think it's sort of 1913. But I would really like to read some of his mysteries that weren't Sherlock Holmes stories because I know a lot of the rest of his novels were like really historical set in the kind of re renaissance and medieval period which I'm slightly less interested in. I'm keen to read one of his mystery novels that is not part of the Sherlock Holmes series so yeah hoping to read the mystery of Clumber at some point in the not too distant future. Next I have three novels by Wilkie Collins. Wilkie Collins is probably a writer who I would potentially like to read everything by at some point but I feel like I haven't read enough of his work to judge whether that is the case. However one of his books that I definitely want to read is The Law and the Lady. This is a mystery novel from 1875 and I've heard really really good things about this and apparently as well one of the main characters is Disabled which as I've mentioned before is one of my kind of interests in Victorian literature. I'm hoping to do a video about it this Victober and kind of in reading stuff for that video kind of made me more interested in the presentation of characters with disabilities in Victorian literature so that is something I would definitely like to read and also like I've read four books by Wilkie Collins so far. Didn't like one of them but the other three I really liked so I'm very interested to read more by him. I've also just finished reading Poor Miss Finch which is one of his novels in which the main character is blind and I found like the exploration and kind of presentation and representation of her blindness really really interesting and mostly good so I'm curious to pick up The Law and the Lady. I would also like to read his novel Armadale from 1866. Now I don't know too much about this one except that it's considered one of the great Victorian novels about fallen women which is another theme that I'm very interested in in Victorian literature so Armadale is definitely one I should read. And then I'd also like to read No Name from 1862. This is a novel not exactly about fallen women but about illegitimacy which is another theme I find quite interesting in Victorian literature especially in novels such as Bleak House and because it is like such a big deal within the Victorian world like if your parents weren't married that's like such a scandal so I think that's going to be a really really interesting one to pick up at some point in the future. And then also have John Halifax Gentleman by Diana Mullock Crake. This is a novel from 1856 and Kate Howe I believe is currently reading it and has strongly recommended it to me and also told me that one of the main characters it has a disability which as I mentioned is something I'm finding interesting in Victorian literature at the moment. I'm also currently as of filming this video reading another 
another novel by the animal at Craig Olive and I'm loving it so far like I'm only a fifth of the way through but it's so good and I'm so excited to read more of it and I think feel like I will definitely be picking up lots and lots of books by her in the future then I also have Jill by Amy Dillwyn from 18 84. Now I have read one book by Amy Dillon before and that was The Rebecca Writer which I read in October last year and really really enjoyed and I haven't really heard of Jill until this October when it's been cropping up on quite a few people's TBRs. But apparently it has some quite serious lesbian undertones which is something else I find interesting in Victorian literature. I will link down below the video I made last year for Victober about LGBTQ plus themes and kind of undertones in Victorian literature. I have heard Sean the Book Maniac who's currently reading it say that he didn't especially get on with it but I still think that it's one that I'm going to find really interesting and I know that I really like the Rebecca writer so that's a good sign in terms of her writing. I then have Consingby by Benjamin Disraeli. This is a novel from 1844. Now I have read one other novel by Benjamin Disraeli and that was Sybil or The Two Nations which I really enjoyed. I thought it was great. It wasn't like my favourite Victorian novel ever but I found it really interesting and Consingby is supposed to be like one of the great Victorian political novels so it's gonna be quite interesting to read that and kind of compare it to Anthony Trollope who's another writer of political novels. Benjamin Disraeli was Prime Minister of Britain twice for the Conservative Party but he also modelled himself on Byron, started out his political career as a radical and was also a novelist because the Victorian period was cool. The next on my list is The House by the Churchyard by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. Now this novel is from 1863 and sounds really really interesting. It is apparently both a kind of mystery novel and a historical novel and is considered one of the like major works by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. And I have read Camilla by him which I really enjoyed and Uncle Silas which I really enjoyed and a couple of short stories which I also really enjoyed. He's a great gothic and supernatural writer so I definitely like to pick up more by him. Then another book on my list is Diary of a Nobody by George and Whedon Grossman. This is a novel novel from 1892 and this has been on my TBR for a really really long time since I was like 17 because when I was 17 doing my A-levels I used to go to English club after school because I was a cool teenager um, and we read some extracts of Diary of a Nobody there and I found it really funny and really really interesting I was like oh I must read this in full and then that was that was like eight years ago and I have not done it also Kate Howe has recently strongly recommended it lots of Kate Howe mentions today and um, so that also kind of encourages me to pick it up and I believe that there bringing out a new edition of it um, in the new year in the collector's library. I mean not this edition, the new design, but a nice little pocket edition. So I might get my hands on that and we'll see how I get on with it. The next one on my list is Marianne Withers by Geraldine Dewsbury. This is a novel from 1851 and I'm very excited to read this one. Definitely going to be high up my list in terms of priority of these. I have read well, one and a half co novels currently by Geraldine Dewsbury, The Half Sisters, which is one of my favourite Victorian books, and Zoe, which I'm reading at the moment as we're filming this, and by the time this video goes up, I will have probably finished. And apparently Marianne Withers is a novel which, like many of hers, looks at kind of like fulfilment in women's lives and kind of dissatisfaction being a Victorian woman. But apparently it's also an industrial novel and about Manchester, and that just like ticks two of my big Victorian boxes so yeah I'm excited for that one. Then there's also The Light That Failed by Rudyard Kipling which sounds really interesting so I'm currently reading Kim by Rudyard Kipling and really really enjoying it much more than I enjoyed The Jungle Book so I'm looking forward to reading some more of his novels. I don't know too much about The Light That Failed but I believe it's set sort of between India and England and it's about an artist who is kind of trying to complete his masterpiece before he goes blind which I think sounds really really interesting and as I've mentioned I'm fairly interested in sort of disability in Victorian literature so yeah that one is on my list. I then also like to read Miss Brown by Vernon Lee. This is a book from 1884 and apparently it is very critical of the aesthetic movement in the late 19th century so that sounds very interesting. Vernon Lee was brought to my attention by the Victoria TBR of Ollie Bliss whose channel I will link down below. Next I have two novels by Margaret Oliphant. I've read a handful of Margaret Oliphant books before and really enjoyed them all and I'm actually two thirds of the way through her Carlingford Chronicles which I've read four out of the six of but I'm missing two so I need to read The Perpetual Curate and also Phoebe Junior. I really like her writing style, it's kind of good fun and often a mix of like sensationalism and Cranford, that's like the best way for me to describe Margaret Oliphant. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading those two in the future and actually I do have one other Margaret Oliphant book on my list and this is Hester which I believe is on Kate Howe's TBR this October or certainly it's one that she has talked about on her channel 
And this is a novel from 1883 and is apparently about a woman like struggling in business in a very male environment, so that sounds absolutely fascinating. Next I have The Ordeal of Richard Feverell, A History of Father and Son by George Meredith, and this is a novel from 1859. Now I have read one novel and some poetry by George Meredith before, and the novel by him that I've read is The Egoist, which I love. I thought it was incredible. It was tough going, it was a difficult read, but it was absolutely worth it and like so interesting in terms of gender. So this is supposed to be one of his other really really interesting novels and it's apparently about like education and Victorian attitudes towards sexuality so that sounds very interesting and that is on my list. Then I also have Esther Waters by George Moore. I feel like this is one of the better known books on this list although it is not that well known either but I read Drama in Muslim by George Moore last Victoba and really really enjoyed it and this novel Esther Waters is from 1894 and is apparently about fallen women so yes yeah, something else I said I'm interested in in Victorian literature. I've also heard great things about this from Anne from Your Other Pages I think and a few other booktubers as well so yeah looking forward to getting to that one at some point in the future. Then I have News From Nowhere by William Morris from 1890. Now I haven't read very much of William Morris's writing though I have read a few extracts here and there from News From Nowhere but I'm really interested in like his other work. As some of you will know I work in publishing and what I mostly do at the moment or like two-thirds of what I do at the moment is edit antiques guides and I find like the textiles and furniture of William Morris like beautiful and really really fascinating and I love like his designs and the wallpaper like it's so nice. So I just feel like as I have quite a lot of interest in him as a figure and his kind of role in kind of arts and craft movements I really should read some of his writing and apparently News From Nowhere is a novel in which socialism meets science fiction so you know that sounds fun. I then have two plays on this list both are by George Bernard Shaw. I have only read one play by him. I've read Mrs Warren's Profession and then I've also seen Major Barbara on stage and I really really like what I've read and seen of George Bernard Shaw so far so there's definitely more by him that I need to read. Widower's Houses from 1892 is definitely one that's high up my list and also You Never Can Tell from 1896 which apparently is all about social mobility. Something else I find interesting in Victorian literature so that sounds great. We're getting there there's only three left to go. I then have Barry Lyndon by William Makepeace Thackeray. This is a Thackeray novel from 1844 and it is apparently the fictional autobiography of an adventurer and a rogue which sounds interesting but more importantly it is only 220 pages. Now I read Vanity Fair as a teenager and I liked it but I don't remember it that well and I'd really like to try something else by William Makepeace Thackeray but while I read and enjoyed Vanity Fair as a teenager it wasn't one of my favourites so I feel like I want to ease my way back into William Thackeray with something a bit shorter so Barry Lyndon sounds like a good pick for that. Next is Jessie Phillips, A Tale of the Present Day by Frances Trollope. Now Frances Trollope is the mother of Anthony Trollope and I haven't read anything by her yet although Michael Armstrong Factory Boy is on my TBR for Victober. don't know if I'm going to get to it but if I do I would like to read more by her and regardless I would like to read quite a lot by her because I've heard really interesting things about her and also she was Anthony Trollope's mother and I just like the fact that they were both writers and I like to imagine in my head that they had like long chats about writing. Anyway I don't know very much about this novel but the, type, the subtitle A Tale for the Present Day suggests there's going to be social criticism and that kind of thing in there so I'm looking forward to that one. Finally the last one is The Wheels of Chance by H.G. Wells. This is a novel of his from 1896 and this is his first non-science fiction work I believe which is a comic novel about a cycling holiday which sounds really fun. I also want to read like everything by H.G. Wells but as the bulk of H.G. Wells and a lot of my unread H.G. Wells is Edwardian rather than Victorian. I thought I would just mention The Wheels of Chance for now. Okay, this has been a lot of novels in a very short space of time. I say a very short space of time, probably longer space of time than I intended. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any recommendations of other Victorian books I should read. And as I said, recommendations for non-fiction and poetry and plays would be especially welcome too, as I kind of know what I'm doing with Victorian novels, but beyond that, my knowledge is kind of a little bit less. So yes, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back very soon with another the Victoba video.